our little Let's Talk Disaster Preparedness segment. This is a new segment uh, brought to you in conjunction with Listos, California and the Kern Fire Safe Council. So we got a grant, both the Fire Safe Council and KFCR Community Radio got a grant from Listos, California to educate people and talk about disaster preparedness. And they have a plan. They have a five-step plan for you to get ready uh, to, uh, you know, for whatever disaster you're going to face. Now, a lot of their material is specifically related to California. Listos California means Ready California. And it was an organization that's funded through uh, COVID relief money, I, I think. Uh, anyway, we have uh, the state of California is putting a lot of money into disaster preparedness, into fire prevention, all kinds of things, getting ready for the earthquake that's coming. So, uh, so we're doing this show as a, this little segment as part of the grant fulfillment. So please, please, please like our page, whatever page you're listening to this on. Like the page, go to the Fire Safe Council page, like their page too. The Kern, I'm sorry, it's Kern Fire Safe on Facebook. Kern Fire Safe is the name of their page. So go there, like the page, and you'll get all kinds of great information from them and from KFCR Radio. And, um, and you'll be helping uh, us do our grant fulfillment. So we would really appreciate all the support that we can get from you. So, okay, so let's get right into it. I want these to be short segments. So we're gonna talk about um, making a contact list. And making a contact list is actually the first step in making a plan to protect your family or your employees even. Um, and last week when I did the, um, did the first segment last week, it was kind of an overview. And I mentioned their first step, which is to uh, get alerts on your phone. So, or email alerts. So I don't know in other states, but in California, if you go to calalerts.org, that's calalerts.org, you can sign up and they'll text alerts to your phone. They'll send you alerts whenever there's a, an emergency. They'll update you on fire and all kinds of things. So it's a really handy thing to have. And those of you who are not in California, most states have some kind of alert or warning system. You know, it's similar to uh, the Amber Alert. So sign up, find out where it is. Um, it might be county to county. It might be in the state. Call your county. I don't know if you have a county information line in, in California to, or in, in Los Angeles County, at least. 211 is the information number for the entire county. And they can tell you what the alerts are or just Google it and you'll find out if you are state slash county has these alerts. So be sure to sign up for those and you know know whenever something is happening that you need to be aware about. Okay, so the first step in making this plan is to, they call it connect and protect. So making a plan doesn't cost you anything, right? You don't need supplies to make a plan. You just need to know what you're gonna do. That includes knowing where the people you love are gonna be, how you expect to get to them, and how you can be in contact with them. So click, um, so we're gonna go through all the steps here. They have five steps. We're not gonna do all five steps today, but I'm, I'm going to uh, go through this contact list and, um, and hopefully you'll get started and take this seriously and do this. And so the first thing you wanna do is think of the people you would want to stay in communication with during an emergency. Um, do you have all their contact information, such as phone numbers and email addresses? Maybe you have home phone number and maybe you should get their cell phone number so you can text them if you need to. Um, do you have a way to contact them at places where they work or at school? People on your list may not be home when a disaster happens. Um, and you want to um, pick one person, this is really important, one person outside of your area where you live so you who who won't be affected by your local disaster so uh in other words when i had when we had the um, northridge earthquake in 1994 
um, I had a friend who was a contact. I was able to get through to my mother right after the earthquake it was around 4.30 in the morning. I called her immediately because have had previous experience when there's a, a disaster or emergency or earthquake, the phone lines just get tied up. You can't get through. The cell towers become overburdened and you can't get out. You can't get a line out. They can't call you. I called her at 4.30 in the morning and I said, I'm okay. I just wanted you to know I've got to go check the property and I'll try to get back to you later, but you might not hear from me for a few days, but I wanted you to know I was okay because we were very close to the epicenter and I know that she worries. So I was able to get a hold of her and then I was able to text um, the person who was my main contact for all my friends and people, family and people that needed to be in touch and know that I was okay. So I texted them, told them I was okay. And then everybody had this person's contact information, right? So um, you, your family and others on your contact list might be able to check in as safe with that far away relative or friend and share where you are and that you're okay. Or if you need something, you might indicate that you need something, you know, like our power's out or uh, the water main broke or, or whatever it is, you might let them know that. So you want to make sure that your distant contact, somebody not in your area, is aware that they are your contact. You can't just say, okay, we're all going to call this person and not have this person's approval to contact them, right? That would not be good. And then they go, what are you talking about? So you want to make sure you take all of that uh, into consideration and make those plans with them ahead of time. So discuss it with the contact and with everyone else on your list. So start by choosing who your contact is going to be and have that conversation with them. Tell them why you chose them as a contact and actually ask them if that's okay with them, that people call them, you need to give out their um, phone number and probably email so people can get in touch with them. Uh, and also you might want to ask them to contact somebody for you. So for instance, uh, my friend had my mother's contact. Had I not been able to get in touch with my mother immediately, um, I would have asked my friend to contact her, but uh, that wasn't necessary because I was able to get a hold of her. But it's really important that you remember, keep in mind that unless you call immediately after the disaster hits and you're able to call, you might not be able to get through. Even for text messages, you might not be able to get through. Um, if the internet's working, you can always send an email. So we have options, but the options don't always function. Um, so, so everybody who's on your family list or your close friends, anybody that you want would want to be reassured, you should tell them who this person is and how to get in touch with them, right? And again, I'm going to go back and make sure that the person who you're sending them to gives permission for that to happen. So, um, so that's really important. And then, um, Yeah, so then we're going to move on to like making a plan. So now you have your contact list, which is your first, uh, your first step of your plan. Now you need to have a plan to protect your family and friends. And you want to have several plans. You want to take things into consideration like where, where are you? So select the most likely places you're going to be. You're going to be at home. You're going to be at work. You're going to be at school out with friends, this includes your, your children, your other relatives, anybody living in your household. The plan should be for who's in your household. Um, and then where are they gonna be during the day? 4.30 in the morning, hopefully everybody is at home in bed. Uh, we were in my house, everybody was at home in bed. So, um, so you need to think about what the plan is for if your kids are at school or you're working and your spouse is working. You know, how do you get together? We had this tremendous earthquake and it was very difficult to get around. The freeways were broken in places. They were closed. A lot of the streets were closed. Um, there was a damage and some accidents. I mean, it was kind of a mess, right? Uh, some, some areas got hit harder than others. There were at least two, maybe three freeway breaks, if I remember. Uh, 
happen. When you're evacuating for a fire, sometimes you have time to get ready. You know the fire is coming in your direction. You have time to get ready. You don't have to stress. You can take a breath and contact everybody and go, we need to leave. We're getting ready to evacuate. Um, we're going to pick you up at school. We're going to do this or that. But you want to have that in writing so that especially your kids, the younger ones, don't get scared. They know that you have a plan and you're going to come for them. You're not going to forget them. So imagine an order to leave for a fire comes at noon on Tuesday. Think about each question and select the answer that most closely relates to you. So select the most likely place. Where are you going to be? Home? At work? At school? And then, um, and then you want to go to listoscalifornia.org. Even if you're in another state, it doesn't matter. They have some really great information on their uh, website. And that's listos, L-I-S-T-O-S, california.org. Go there and then um, go to their online course. It's about 20 minutes. It'll take you step by step through all of this. It'll give you forms um, when you answer a question and you hit submit. So say you're at work and then you hit submit and then it goes to the next question. So it's important to think ahead. Imagine where you might be can help you plan how to connect with your people and try it in other situations. So do one for home, do one for work, do one for school, do one for out with friends, wherever you might be. So where would you be in, if an earthquake struck on Sunday at midnight? So identify all the different possible scenarios that you can come up with. And then where are your, where are your people, your family members, your friends, the people that you want to be in touch with, the people that are part of your plan, where will they be? Right, and then so you can then um, create a plan to deal with all those things like and then the school needs to know if you cannot come say you are in an earthquake uh, and your house slid off the foundation or uh, part of the roof fell in and you were injured trees fell on your property and you can't get out there are trees blocking the streets you can't get out who's going to pick up your kids from school do you have a backup plan and is the school aware of that backup plan so all of these things should be included. And the other thing you should do if you have kids at school or even at your work or your spouse's work or if your kids are working, you want to find out if they have a plan for their employees or their students. And what is that plan? And what happens if there's an earthquake and you can't come pick up your kids, you have an alternative to pick up the kids. How, how does that happen? Or if there's a fire and the school has to evacuate, where are they evacuating to? Where will you be able to pick up your kids? Because if it's the kind of scenario where uh, the fire department says, you need to leave right now, get these kids on a bus, and you pile all the kids on the bus and drive away, where are they driving to? Where will you be able to go and meet your kids? This is really important to know. So you have to contact the school. Um, it's the same with the spouse's workplace and your workplace. Find out if they have a plan. Most businesses, do have a plan. They're supposed to have a plan, and they do. And um, I was worked in several companies where I was actually involved in creating the plan, and we practiced the plan, and it was a real. They were really good plans, and it helps you feel more secure and more confident that you can get through this, and you don't have to panic. You can breathe because you kind of have a, have a good idea of what you're going to do. So that's really important. Um, okay, so so that's the main thing, and. The plan, your plan would include, if you need to go, what are you taking with you? Do you have your documents ready to go, or at least copies of your documents ready to go? You should put them on a fire stick or a memory stick, whatever they call those. You know, take that with you. Um, and you should try to hold on to the originals. Take the originals with you. So you want to think about keeping things in a place that's easily accessible where you can grab them and go. So I just keep my documents in my grab and go bag. I, I keep them there already. So if I have to go, I just pick up the bag and I'm out the door. I may need to grab a coat from the coat closet uh, or whatever, but for the most part, I have everything together.
um, I have extra pair of glasses. Well, we'll talk about that when we get to, to go bags and, and stay at home bags. We'll get to that. So if you have any questions, post them in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, you can see it's kind of cold here. I, I'm kind of rushing through this because I want to get get it done in case the internet goes out. We've been wonky all day because we're having a snowstorm. There's ice on the wires. It's really, really cold here. It's like down in, the, it was down in the teens this morning and it's in the 20s. It's cold and you can see I have all these layers on. Um, so I'm just trying to rush through this so I can get it done, before, you know, in case anything happens. So thanks for your patience with my rushing here. And I sound a little out of breath, but it's cold. <laughs> So, um, okay, so, so the contact list is really, really essential. Step one is the alerts. Step two is the contact list and creating your plan. Um, and then next week we'll talk about being even more, uh, more ready and we'll talk about the go bags and, and all the other things in the list here. So. Next, next episode for certain is going to be talking about packing the go bag. Um, start your packing list now. Start it now. You don't have to wait for next week. What do you need to take with you? So we're going to go into that in more depth next week. And then, um, then after that is going to be build a stay box. So we'll learn what you should have on hand if you have to shelter in place. And in some cases you do. When we had that earthquake, we stayed at home. We didn't have any power. Uh, we were out of water for a little while, but the water came back pretty quick. So there's a lot of things you need to be prepared for. And if you're staying at home and you're going to have a power outage, I mean, this is good for anything. Hurricane, power outage, what do you do after a tornado, um, all kinds of things. Arctic storms, nor'easters, just normal snowstorms, planned power outages, there are a lot of those heavy windstorms, hurricanes, tsunamis, um, all of these things. You need to think about what are the hazards in your area? What could possibly happen when all these things, if you have an earthquake, what could possibly happen? If you have a hurricane, what could possibly happen? If there's a fire, what could possibly happen? And once you start to look at that, then you want to look at all the hazards around you. How can you mitigate some of those hazards? These are all part of a plan and all part of being safe. So we're going to talk more about that. We'll, we'll, um, we'll talk about the go box, the stay plans, and then we're going to talk about helping friends and neighbors. That was a big one in the earthquake. We, you know, our water came back on really, really fast, but we had other people who were a few blocks away who had no water. So they would come to our house, they would shower, they would get drinking water. Uh, and do what they needed to do. And sometimes we just, they would bring food and cook it at our house so we could clean the dishes. There's just so many things to take into consideration, right? But being prepared for it, nothing, none of this is really difficult and it doesn't have to be really expensive. It's just, it's really about being smart. So, okay, so some of this was my own input. This was beyond what Listos has. But again, if you go to listoscalifornia.org, and take their online course. It'll take you through all of these five steps. Um, and they have forms there you could fill out. You could, um, if you're on the uh, stay box portion of the course and you click on where it says start here, they give you a form, they give you a list, things that you can put in your, you know, what needs to go in your stay box, tells you exactly how much you need per person. So there's no guessing here. Okay, so I really appreciate you being here. I want to ask you a question and leave an answer in the comment. I will actually put the question in the comment box once the uh, video loads. But I want to know how many of you have a plan already and feel confident that it's a complete plan? And then how many of you have a go bag? This is a big deal with the go bags because if they have a fire and you need to go right now, you don't have time to pack anything. You need to have stuff that you need ready. So how many of you have a go bag? And if you don't already have a go bag, 
do you have um, a backpack or some kind of rucksack or bag that you can pack stuff in? It it can be a bag that you like an overnight bag, a, a weekend or a gym bag, something like that that you put supplies in. Do you already have a bag that you can pack? I, I really would like to know that because we're uh, we have a possibility where we might have some bags available in the near future. So uh, I would like to know that. And and is can you fit enough for everybody in your family in the bag? That's a whole nother thing. So all right. So we'll talk more about this. Thank you so so much for tuning in for these short minutes here and. Um, Excuse me for like rushing through this, but I really wanted to get this done before or just in case the internet went down. So, um, okay, so that's about it. Answer the question in the comment section. I really appreciate that. Don't forget to like the video, uh, follow um, both the KFZR community radio page and, and the uh, Kern Fire Safe page. Like them both, follow them both. And you'll get notices every time we go live um, and you won't miss a thing and you'll be better prepared for when we're done. Okay, thank you so much. Bye.